our first stop on today's Niigata trek is located in the Yokogoshi area of southern Niigata. The group and I spent our morning in complete awe of our surroundings and the amazing story behind Niigata's Northern Culture Museum. Originally the mansion of Bunkichi Ito, during the Edo period between 1603 and 1868, the Northern Culture Museum is yet another facet attributing to the rich history of Niigata. Bunkichi Ito was, at one time, one of the largest landowners in Niigata. In 1903, Atsuo Ito became the seventh Bunkichi and family patriarch when he was only eight years old. After graduating from Keio University, he went to the United States to continue his studies in Pennsylvania. The story picks up at the end of World War II, when U.S. occupying forces, led by General MacArthur, disassembled all large landholdings in Japan as part of a number of political and economic reforms. In 1946, tasked with carrying out terms of the U.S.-established Land Reform Act, First Lieutenant Ralph Wright came to the Ito household to inquire information about the family and estate, with the original plan being to demolish the property and convert it into apartment complexes. The visit resulted in an uncanny coincidence. Lieutenant Wright realized he recognized Atsuo Ito as they both attended Pennsylvania University. The two became friends and Lieutenant Wright classified the residence as having valuable cultural significance and legacy, allowing it to be converted to the museum that it is today. The group and I really enjoyed walking through the museum grounds. The craftsmanship and detail to virtually every foot of the main house, various rooms and structures exemplified the extraordinary level of traditional Japanese architecture. The breathtaking gardens, the zashiki or 100 tatami mat main guest room, the art gallery and many artifacts from hundreds of years ago are just a few of the highlights that you can experience here. Curator and director Takao Sato took the group and I around and pointed out many of the incredible nuances here at the Northern Culture Museum. One piece, only one in Japan, the longest one, 30 meters long, number one in Japan, very rare. They see the beam with the wrinkle, never grow long never grow big. But this one is the longest one with many wrinkles. So when the first generation Bunkichi had a business of indigo and his success, and when the fifth generation built this mansion, he decided to put the color of indigo for the walls. So the walls were usually white in you know, different color. So eighth generation Bunkichi will be the last Bunkichi. He married American and divorced and remarried and they don't have any children. I really wanted to be a Bunkichi, but my name is Mr. Sato, not Ito. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> As we continued our exploration, the second part of today's Northern Culture Museum itinerary was getting to design our own gold inlaid lacquerware. There were a lot of different designs and as you can see here, lots of concentration and maximum effort. Okay, first of all, you choose whatever pattern you want, mm -hmm. then you tape it to your lacquerware, then place the carbon sheet under that, and with a pencil, trace the lines, and it turns white on this lacquer. Then they have this special tool that you have to chisel away. And then they will give it to the professional person who will embed it with gold. So gold to powder. I opted for the Mount Fuji in the clouds design for my plate. Very nice. Oh, you're very kind. Yeah. 
our visit here was definitely one of my favorite highlights of our Niigata trip, and my sincerest thanks to curator and director Takao Sato for the in-depth tour. It's so peaceful, calm, and tranquil here, you really don't want to leave. The history behind this beautiful place and how a friendship preserved these incredible grounds further attributes to the many factors why the Northern Culture Museum is a must-see locale when visiting Niigata. This is probably one of the best experiences I've had in Japan. Thank you. Uh, and we've been doing this show for 12 years now, so thank you very much thank for you very much. welcoming us. Thank you. Really appreciate that. And for sharing this mm -hmm. wonderful place. Take care, folks. Aloha. Aloha. Our next stop on our final Niigata day was a haven for shoyu glazed, crispy treats, and crunchy delights here at the Niigata Senbei Kingdom. Since Niigata is known for its rice, it made a lot of sense that their senbei would also be great. Here, we all got to design and bake our own giant senbei rice crackers. Our guide and translator, Sato-san, explains a bit about the senbei production and our instructions for designing our savory souvenirs. All these senbei are done, uh, made by hand, and so the, the quantity of uh, senbei that can make a day is limited to 1,000 pieces only, 1,000 1, to 1,500 pieces only. If you machine a day, uh, you can make about 1 million to uh, 1.5 million <laughs> senbei. <laughs> but here only 1,000 to 1,500. It's a very precious one. The temperature of that charcoal is about 700 degrees Celsius. So hot. Look at this, how do you call it? That's the mesh device. Weighs about six pounds. So you have to turn it over 30 times at least. So he has a break just one hour, lunchtime. So from, uh, from, from morning till evening, he has to keep doing that. So now he would serve those uh, senbei to you. If you eat, eat the whole piece, then in, uh, you'll be full. So small, he's breaking into small pieces. So please uh, put that uh, uh, dough, dough on, on that uh, mesh and turn it over, please. Many times, turn it over. Keep going. Keep doing. Keep doing. So uh, later on, you are gonna you are gonna draw draw pictures on Sunday. So uh, so uh, think over your design. So you see the pen the pen here, and then when you draw when you draw pictures. You don't have to draw it so hard. Even though the line is very big, it's okay. The constant flipping over of the senbei ensures that it doesn't burn too much on one side. After it cooks all the way through, it can become very brittle, so each of us are hoping our designs don't crack before we can bag and box them to take them home. You can use this one from, from, out, from outside to inside. Like, like this. From the looks of it, we have a 90% success rate, and it also appears that a lot of us went very heavy on the shoyu based thing. All around the Sendai Kingdom, we see the bakouke or banana shaped flavored crackers. Created by Kuriyama Bakery, Boding and Boding are a boyfriend girlfriend pair of bakouke mascots that you see on just about all the goods sold here and across Japan. <laughs> As part of our Niigata adventures, we had the ultimate dining experience at restaurant French Tepon Seikoan. With an amazing view of the Shinano River and the Sea of Japan, Seiko-an's service and menu was the perfect way to top off our Saki no Jin Day. I got to spend some quality time with my guest co-host Sharon Miyashiro, our non-stop travel tour guide, as we all got to enjoy the absolutely stellar dishes here at Seiko-an. 
Hello folks, probably met her earlier in the tour in our segment. Sharon, a non-stop travel ringleader for us this time, keeping everyone motivated and happy. This has been part of the non-stop travel and special Dohoga TV Japan Mania Niigata and Sato Sake no Jin premium tour. Now Sharon, we say premium and we're sitting at a premium place. This is Seiko On. This is gonna be fantastic. So I gotta ask you, you've done so many tours for non-stop travel now. Give me your top favorite place that you've been to. Kyoto. Okay. Wow. I love Kyoto. That was real quick, Kyoto. There's gonna be people that's gonna be watching uh, these segments and we're gonna have a few this season where we travel, like a travel diary and travel log um, as we have accompanied a number of non-stop travel tours. What do you think for customers, or at least the feedback you've gotten, why do people keep coming back to non-stop? I think they enjoy the the presentation of the itinerary. I see, yeah. 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 And and the tour managers. Of course. They do their best. Of course. Yeah. And the different places that they visit. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. The variety of places. Variety, yeah. We spoke off camera about this, but you're a teacher by trade. Now, where are some of the places that you've taught at? Oh my. Waimanalo is one. Waimanalo, God's country. I was Akebono's teacher. Oh, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I even taught a year in Molokai. Manawili is where I ended my career. I but be between there, there's a lot of preschools, oh. Kalihi. I think probably for me, one of the most fulfilling jobs ever was YMCA group leader. Oh, you know, you? yeah, it was. Kahala, going right next to Wilson Elementary. Very nice. Yeah. Quite a lot of teachers who ha are being tour managers now. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. But now we have a lot of police officers. Yeah. That's right. So. Uh, what's been some of your highlights for this trip? This trip, uh, basically the people for one thing. There's a lot of different characters, there's a lot of different volumes. We've been blessed with a great group. Niigata is actually a, a, a home from my grandparents. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. So it's great to come to Niigata. Ah. Yes, but... Sharon, look at all this good food here. Oh, look at that. Smells so good. It smells so good. I, can smell it. <laughs> I can't focus the camera. <laughs> well, would you look at that? It's like. I know. It's, like, it's so tender. You can put everything in this plate right here. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> so not, so not. <laughs> go in, go in, go in. So we saw this as it was cooking. This is the foie gras, which is absolutely fantastic. Lyonnaise potato. Uh -huh. So let's go for it. Okay. Like Another, oh, the salt, Hawaiian, I mean, not Hawaiian. The salt Rock on top? salt is on it. Oh my God. No, it's so soft. Oh, that is heavenly. Mitsoishi. Mitsoishi. I think the salt with the duck, sometimes when you eat foie gras, it's a little bit, it's super rich. I think the salt like helps kind of balance that. Kind of cuts the, you know, the richness that's in foie gras. Of course, the bacon and the Lyonnaise potatoes. Wow. Good. Sharon, you know it's serious. When they can make potatoes and bacon and onions compete with foie gras. Because they're both really that good. <laughs> really, yeah. You don't chew it at all? It's like voodoo magic. I don't know. I don't get it. A uh, chef is making a lobster tail for us. And we have um, a lobster tail with boiled egg and bread salad coming out. Sounds fantastic. Mm, with Let's... garlic chips. Oh, look at that. Now, if he's going to put grilled lobster into that, it's going to be fantastic. And I have a feeling he is. <laughs> Are you ready to have the steamed lobster with boiled egg and bread salad? I am ready. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Okay, lobster first. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you insisted. Mmm, mm, it's really good. Yep. Oishi, oishi. I like it like the sauce just dripping and just asking to be eaten. I thought nothing would outdo the foie gras. 
This outdoes the foie gras. <laughs> and you notice it's the so vegetables nice. all melted just by yeah. putting all that. Exactly. Lobster. But you know the fact you put the butter and of course the lobster sauce that he added on here, it's such a nice blend with the crispiness of the veggies. Mm -hmm. mm. Even the croutons are amazing. I know. Croutons. It's really not fair. <laughs> After starting off with a foie gras appetizer, which was then escalated to a lobster tail salad featuring lobster butter sauce as the dressing, would the finale be able to top the previous dishes? It sure did. Get some pyromaniacs down there. <laughs> Sharon, we are ready. <laughs> We've got Getting the main excited. course. Getting <laughs> our main course. Uh, we, of course, we had the wonderful pyrotechnics, and we're looking at some amazing Japanese sirloin. Why don't we have the uh, steak? Why don't we just start, start off at the top? Look at this, perfectly done. I'm gonna do dip in a little bit of the Himalayan pink rock salt. That's what I'm supposed to. Just a tad. You ready? Ready. Itadakimasu. Hi. Mmm, so soft. Mmm. Show you what I got. It is so tender. Mmm. -hmm. Himalayan rock salt it brings out the juiciness of the meat itself. It's just permeating with wonderful flavor. And it's amazing. Now, you can also have it with the ponzu. No salt. Mmm. I kind of like it with that salt. Yeah. Whenever I eat sushi, I always say wasabi nuki because I don't eat wasabi. Yeah, I don't. But in the recent years, I've noticed when you take a little bit of wasabi, just a little bit, you put it on the steak, it adds yet another dimension of flavor. Amazing. This is so good. Oh my gosh. So, Sharon, why don't we continue enjoying the incredible steak, grilled vegetables. Vegetables. The, the course they've laid out here for us here at Seiko on. This is going to be fantastic. Mahalo mm -hmm. for tuning in Looking with forward. my co host here in Niigata, Sharon Miyashiro, Hi. Nonstop Travel. Uh, I'm going to continue having this great dinner and probably a few drinks after this. As always, Mahalo for watching, folks. Take care and aloha. Aloha. After a fantastic dinner at Seiko on and an incredible time here in Niigata, the following morning, we were on our way to Sarogashima or Sado Island. The sixth largest island in the Japan archipelago, Sado Island is located 50 kilometers off the coast of the Niigata Prefecture. This would be my first time there, and taking the jet foil to Sado got us there in an hour. Hello. Group and I were delighted at the welcome reception that we'd received upon our arrival. In the 8th century, Sado was formerly a place of exile for political outcasts and prisoners due to its remote location. Another pivotal component in Sado Island's history was that of gold. In 1601, during the Edo period, gold was discovered in the Aikawa settlement on Sado Island. Shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu expanded the gold and silver mine production, resulting in it becoming the largest gold mine in Japan from 1601 to 1989. Here at Sato's Kinzan Gold Mine, we got to walk through the actual mines and got a glimpse of what life was like and what conditions were like for those that worked here. The mine features animatronic miners with various voiceovers that mirrored everyday conversations and complaints of the mining crew. One of the highlights of the museum area is this actual gold bar. Ed, Nathan, Keith and I all tried to lift it up and to get it through the hole. Now, I highly doubt we'd actually get to keep it, but it was worth a try. 
as always, mahalo for tuning in, and join us next week for our continued adventures here on Sato Island.